created by the computer manufacturer. You might have a single hard drive, for instance, with two partitions, one partition being the main partition that included all of your files, and the second partition being your recovery partition. The recovery partition takes the place of the installation disk, as well as a complete system backup that existed when your computer was first created. This recovery partition may or may not have a drive letter assigned to it, so you might even not be aware that this recovery partition exists. However, when you boot your computer and you get to the F8 menu, you might be able to select recovery partition as a boot option. However, the recovery partition also assumes that at least a part of your hard drive is still available and accessible. Another tool you might be able to use is a parallel installation. A parallel installation assumes that the hard drive is still available, but that the system files in the default directory are corrupt to the point where a repair is no longer possible. In this case, you would take your installation disk and install to a second location. Maybe you'd call it Windows 2. And then following the installation, you'd be able to boot into this instance of the operating system and presumably still access the remainder of the files that are available on that hard drive. For example, you may have user data files in various directories on the hard disk. Sometimes performing a parallel installation is faster than trying to perform a complete PC backup. You'd use this option if the disk was still accessible and not corrupt. You'd use this option if the disk were not available. A final option you might use as a temporary solution Instead of performing a parallel installation, if your disk still exists with some user data files, you could take your disk and actually insert it into a different computer that is already able to boot up into Windows. So in that case, within a different installation of Windows, you would be able to map the drive to your disk to access your user data files. Again, this assumes that the disk is available. Each of these recovery methods we have discussed restores your system to a working state, but might not restore your user data files. To restore user data files, use the following tools. To restore your data files, if you are able to boot into a version of Windows, you can use previous versions. So for instance, if all you need to do is to install an older version of a file that you may have deleted or modified, you can use the previous version feature. And this again would be available from Windows XP and on. This assumes again that you can boot into your operating system and that the only task you want to perform is roll back to a previous version of the file. If you don't have access to previous versions or if the entire hard drive has failed, you will then need to restore from the backup. In this case, you'd use the appropriate utility based on your operating system, either NT Backup for Windows XP and 2000. Or you'd use Windows Backup for Windows Vista and later. In this case, when you perform the backup, you can often selectively choose the files that you want to restore. So where you may have backed up an entire hard drive with all of the user data, during the restore process, you might choose a specific folder or even a specific file to perform your restore. During the restore process, you can choose to restore the file to its exact location, or you can restore a copy of the file so that you can have the original file plus the file that existed that you're restoring from the backup. For the recovery methods that we have discussed, be aware that many of these are last resort type of options. If possible, you should use other methods to get your system working, and these tools should be used only if nothing else works. For example, it might take a considerable amount of time to restore the entire system, so you should only use this method if a quicker and easier method won't work. we'll take a look at the tools you can use when something goes wrong with Windows. If your system is unstable, one of the first things to try is to use a restore point. With a restore point, you revert your system to a previous state and time.
time. If you can boot into Windows, you can go to All Programs, Accessories, System Tools, and System Restore. And from here you can choose a restore point to restore your system to that specific date and time. If you're unable to boot into Windows, the next thing to try is to use the Advanced Boot Menu options to try to start Windows. As the system starts, and as soon as the BIOS screen disappears, start pressing F8 to display the Advanced Boot Menu options. From the Advanced Boot Options menu, you can try the last known good configuration. This loads the latest configuration the Windows used the last time it was able to boot successfully. You can also boot into Safe Mode, and then within Safe Mode, you can try to use a Restore Point. Again, you can go to All Programs, Accessories, System Tools, and System Restore to select from the available restore points. But what if you can't even boot Windows to the Advanced Boot Options menu? What if the problem occurs before that point? What do you do? In that case, you can use the Installation Disk to help you repair Windows. The first thing to do is to enter the BIOS and change the computer to boot from the optical drive. In this case, it will boot from the Windows installation disk. I'll press a key to boot from the DVD, and then it loads the Windows installation program. Booting to the installation disk will actually start the install process. After clicking Next, instead of choosing Install Now, choose Repair Your Computer. Windows then searches for any installations that exist on this computer, and I can select the installation I want to try to repair. Click Next. I have a menu of options that I can choose to help try to repair my computer. The first thing to try is Startup Repair. Startup Repair automatically tries to fix problems that prevent Windows from starting. We notice here that in this case, Startup Repair couldn't decide what the problem was, and so it couldn't find anything to fix. The next thing to try would be to try System Restore. Choosing System Restore, I have the option of choosing a restore point. These are the same restore points I could have chosen from within Windows. In this case, if I'm unable to boot into Windows, I can use the installation disk to select from the various restore points. If restore points don't work or are unavailable, the next thing I might try is to do a Windows Complete PC Restore. To restore my PC, I will need to have the hard disk or the DVDs connected to the computer that contain the complete PC backup. There's a memory diagnostic tool, and finally a command prompt window. Within the command prompt, I can type commands that help me work with the system and potentially correct any problems that might exist. You would use the command prompt typically when you're directed by support technicians to perform specific actions. At this point, you have to have in mind an idea of what it is you want to accomplish. You might be replacing corrupt files or trying to use other commands to fix problems that keep Windows from starting. Many of the tasks that you used to be able to perform within the recovery console in previous versions of Windows are now performed automatically using the startup repair. So in most cases now you won't use the command prompt for recovering your system. However, you might be able to use the command prompt to do things such as examine the boot log that is recorded when the system boots. For example, the ntbtlog.txt file contains a record of what the system did as it started. In troubleshooting, you might examine this log to find the last item that successfully loaded, and items that attempted to load after that might identify devices that are causing the problems and prevent your system from starting. 